All right, ladies and gentlemen of Speed Gaming, welcome to the day three semifinals uh, match number one of the Dash uh, Memorial Day uh, weekend Spring Invitational 2024. Uh, we've got an excellent matchup here between Zeb316 and Nick Player 21 My name is Kip. I am joined by my esteemed uh, co-commentary for the day, Koopo. Koopo, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, Kip. Happy to be on comms with you. Happy to do this race. Real stoked on how this tournament's been going so far, even though Nick Player took both of us out. That's right, yeah. Nick Player here has made it to the Final Four. Uh, his path there was defeating Kupo in the first uh, round, defeating me in the second round. Let's see if he can keep the hot streak alive. He is facing uh, Titan of the Super Metroid randomizer scene, Z316. I'm really excited for this matchup. Um, both players excellent. Uh, one thing we'll let everybody know, just in case you haven't seen any of the previous matches, it's actually a fairly simple set of settings. Uh, it's just, it's not multi, uh, it's not like a multi um, setting type of tournament. Every race is one combination. It's Chozo with um, area randomization. The bosses are vanilla. The only thing that we've done to spice it up a little bit is one of our features is a starter charge beam and then another one called starter plus. We are using the starter plus setting. Um, as you can see, the damage at the top right. Basically, everybody starts with a charge beam that does one-third damage. Um, there is a logical charge beam on a Chozo item that if you get that one, will bump it up to two-thirds. And then there's also a third charge upgrade out in the wild somewhere. Sometimes runners run into it, sometimes they don't. Technically, if you had all three, you'd have full beam damage. We also changed the minor item distribution. Normally, we play 3-2-1, Missile Supers, Power Bombs. This is 2-1-1. So, um, generally speaking... Fewer supers, a few more power bombs in, in most seeds, um, which I think kind of part of the reason we wanted to test this is to see how that would interface with uh, the beam damage and lead to maybe some more complex boss fighting and stuff like that. And so far, I, I've been really pleased with how it's played. I think it's been pretty interesting. So, yeah, Koopa, what are you, anything to add about the settings? Um, yeah, nothing too much. Obviously, you and I and Mass talked a little bit about them prior to the tournament and what we wanted to see was just some really engaging uh, matches and I think that's pretty much <laughs> been delivered in every set. So even though we've got technically less supers with this 2-1-1 item, we've got the Chozo super and we've got one picked up over there. We also got a power bomb, so I'm wondering if we're going to go ahead and see a little meme portal check as well. Yes, me not checking that portal yesterday uh, probably was a contributing factor to uh, losing my third race against Nick Player. Um, I actually feel like most of the time, going to check it is like either neutral or just kind of okay. But there's a few portals that can be really, really strong if you get them early. Um, yeah. and relative if you just skip them. But see, this one's pretty good. Uh, one reason I think this one is okay right now is because if they didn't have a super... Uh, Nick wouldn't really be able to do anything in Red Brinstar, but the fact that they got some supers early makes this more accessible. So let's see what they end up with. Yeah, Zeb also pretty happy that I didn't go to a heated area and he took one of the side hopper hits. So obviously, looking to hopefully you know recover some energy from that and let's see what this item is. I mean, speed early is pretty great. Yeah, you like to see that for sure. All right, jet seed confirmed. Well, Zeb got Speed Booster, too. How about that? There we go. So, I imagine they're going to go ahead and they're going to go ahead and check the uh, Meridia exit, this uh, little connector up here, and then probably make their way down through, like, the rest of Red Brin. At what point do you think you exit Red Brin from this, though? Were you looking for, like, a green Brin star, looping back into Kateria, something like that? Those are the big things that, like, you... That would make... Or Kraid? <laughs> Well, Cray, yeah, it's <laughs> funny you say that. Crade would be uh, would be uh, excellent because especially vanilla bosses, 
you know that Kraid's actually there. You don't need that much equipment to be able to actually kill the boss and, and, and A, get a major item. Also, you get a refill on your power bombs and another minor item, which for the record, um, I'm a pretty big fan of, even though you start with the starter charge beam, it's all about like meta decisions. And I still feel like there's a lot of value in picking up a lot of miners uh, with the starter charge beam, just because there, we've seen a lot of races end up with people not having very powerful beams so anyway you get a chance at that minor item right there you get a minor item at Kraid z tank and then you get this major and you're not really in danger typically of you know losing to to Kray. that it, it can happen sometimes but usually uh it's not a big deal so the fact that they don't have much equipment but got this is actually good they get to notch off one of the major things they don't have to worry about running into a dead end in a bad place and they get equipped a little bit more I'm thinking there's going to be a suit behind Kraid. We're going to have a boss down in a suit in under five minutes. No, oh, not quite. Uh, to your point, though, about like the ammo, I think that's definitely something that we've seen like pretty early on is, you know, you're not guaranteed to get those beams or you're not guaranteed to get a charge upgrade. So getting anything early, especially it's like getting any super you can really makes like an impact later in the game that can really influence some of the decisions based on like, how much of the minor hunt you went on yeah big time we we've seen just in my matches alone uh i think i've had three or four out of the five that had pretty long mother brain two fights which is not something you traditionally see much of in um uh randomizer settings so i think you know it's all about what you prefer it's all about style of play personally i think this is uh you know it macro wise you're still kind of doing the same thing you would do in a lot of other chozo types of seeds but you get a few more decision making smaller things along the way which i think were, were kind of cool so um but yeah so now they're gonna head back I, if i were if i were them i guess i'd probably continue down and um check the other portals in this zone and maybe go to spazer just to kind of knock that off your list yeah i mean there's four other connectors in criteria you're pretty likely to go ahead and find something that's going to loop around to that pretty easily uh, and you really don't want to go back through site hoppers to go through climb to just get to, like to where another portal could spit you out easily. See, this is actually part of the reason that I'm not a massive fan of uh, of doing the right or doing the portal at the beginning of the game. Um, because number one, if it's not a good portal and it's something that you learn later, you actually save about a minute because you're able to save your power bombs and don't have to refill at the ship. Um, in, in many circumstances. But also, it's like, sometimes visiting criteria that still has, I think, what, two majors that are easily accessible to you at the beginning, and oftentimes will kind of equip you for whatever's to come. Sometimes visiting that at a later time gets really awkward. Um, so anyway, it depends on how you want to play it. Is Zeb going for an early x-ray just for info? No, you, you technically can do this on one. Yeah, but how do you get back, right? You, I think you can get back, too. Uh, it's been a long time since I tried it. It's just extremely slow. Uh, but, yeah, this is probably... I actually don't hate this play. Like, I mean, I think this is... You know, this could be really good. It's just uh, it's a lot of time for one. But, uh, I mean, if it happens to be the one, it's pretty great. Uh, perfect. Well, I mean, I'll take it. Yeah, one of the reasons that I really like Chozo, um, first of all, I was thinking about it the other day, I don't think we've ever had... We've had tournaments where the whole tournament was major minor. We've had tournaments where the whole tournament was like um, full or full countdown. I don't think we've ever had a full Chozo tournament, so that's kind of cool that we're doing this. But basically, like, in a lot of the other, um, like, modes, energy tanks sort of, like, feel like they're devalued a little bit. But in Chozo, they're, like, really important. So um, it's nice to have a, an early tank. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially, it's, like, knowing it's, like, the logical tank, you know, whether that really means much or not. But it's always good to, I think, especially have something, like, written off. Um, you know, you don't want to be like missing some critical movement item or some sort of progressive item and then, uh, you know, be thinking it's like all the way back at x-ray when you're nowhere near it. 
Right. The one thing about X-Ray, though, that I don't always do it early. I, again, this all comes down to kind of strategically how you want to approach something. But um, one good thing about X-Ray, if you don't do it early, is you usually have a decent chance of somewhat easily getting back to the zone because it's the zone with the most connections in it. That's true. That is true. But it's as a check, it's usually quite long compared to some of the other ones. So Koopa, maybe I, Zeb just did something. Maybe I'll have a chance to teach you something that about Super Metroid that you might not be aware of, or maybe you already are, but maybe there's somebody out in the audience that isn't aware. Did you know that for, I don't know how many frames it is, but when Samus lands on the ground, if you fire like a missile or a projectile, it actually will fire lower than it, than it does when she's normally standing. I did not know that, no. So, so yeah, if you fire, when he was exiting Spazer, when he hit the ground, he tried to fire a missile at that CAC, but he, he didn't time it quite correctly and it flew over the CAC. But if you land at the right time and fire at the right time, you can actually, like, it'll, it'll, go, it'll be low enough to actually hit it. And so that mechanism is true across the board for, for Samus. There's other places in the game where you can do that. Okay. Well, we see Nick Player getting to the bottom of Red Brand. Essentially, they're just zigzagging what each one of them are, uh, had previously done. So we're really interested to see where this is like probably going to meet up. But I have a feeling there's something in this business center that's going to give some progression. All right, I'm, I'm curious to see what we have here at the high jump boot and then ice locations. Ooh. The screw attack's pretty useful, especially if we go ahead and find Varia. That makes lower Norfair, especially if you can find the back entrance, a lot more free. Yeah, screw attack, very, very helpful in lower Norfair. I like getting it in major minor when I know there's a chance I could potentially do suitless lower Norfair, but I also really like it here because, as we talked about earlier, oftentimes... Uh, you don't have nearly as much energy, and so screw attack is is in some ways, I mean, kind of like a free lower Norfair. Like, um, it's a pretty powerful item. All right, Zeb's doing a one tank uh, ice hell run. Let's see what we got over here. My meanwhile, Nick is going ahead and going to clean up some of Green Brinstar, so it'll be curious to see what we got over here. And I wasn't looking at Nick Flair's screen when he found it, but he came in on the middle, right? Oh, I think so. Zeb, this is twice now. There's there's three logical E-Tanks, and twice Zeb has run into one at, like, the perfect time for him. <laughs> and then the other logical missile there for Nick Flair as well. Man, we're seeing a lot of, uh... Not the items we want to be seeing at this stage, especially for Chozo statues. Although I guess, you know, the E-Tank is definitely welcome. You know, at some point, maybe we should get a Chozo tracker for Chozo matches, because then, even though it's not super duper important, it at least lets you know, like, what has and has not been picked up that's in the logical um, pool. So, mm -hmm. so far, I think we've seen a super, a power bomb. Um, a missile, missile and two energy energy tanks. I think we've seen two missile packs already. Oh, both of them? Okay. But I might have missed that. Meanwhile, we were commenting on that, though. Nick Player just got space jump from a uh, spore spawn. Um, so it'll be curious then. It's like if we actually got, you know, it's just one other, what this actual portal is going to lead to. Hopefully, this can lead up to Upper Norfair. We can see them kind of come together. You know, one other thing I do really like about these settings, Skip, is these matches do tend to go really, really, really fast. We haven't had many seeds that are, like, like that long. Most of them have been, like, within, like, the 50-minute mark, correct? 
Yeah, I mean, I would say some of these play relatively fast. I guess it kind of depends on like what you want to say fast is relative to the settings. Um, we've definitely had a few burners, but we've also had a few that were like in the hour range, which for Chozo is um, a little bit longer. But yeah, I would say typically a Chozo is, is going to play faster typically than some of the other ones. It just kind of depends. The, the one thing about Major Minor is like if you get like a really like god set up for the items um i think that one can possibly play the fastest but it just depends yeah well while we mentioned that at the top of green brand nick click nick player just picked up gravity probably very happy to see that will open up a lot of the more of the map Ooh, and I his first energy tank that's definitely a, a welcome sight yeah, Green Bryn had Space Jump and Gravity, an excellent, excellent combination um, because not only is Space Jump strong, obviously Gravity is essentially required. I mean, not hard required, but in terms of for speed, you're rarely going to see a seed where doing Suitless and Chozo is the best way. But um, in particular, Space Jump is most powerful in Meridia, so <laughs> excellent combination to get early in the run. Speaking of Meridia, is this where we're getting spit out? It is. Nick Player finds uh, the Redfish top of uh, West Meridia while Zeb is going ahead and taking care of Cantoon. Okay, nice, nice Cantoon fight from Zeb there. So, I guess now... Is that the first time we've seen... Mer no, it's not the first time we've seen West Meridia, but we're going to go ahead and get all the rest of these portals cleared out. Okay, and Nick says no to Forgotten Highway, um, which was at the Crab Shaft. Interestingly, Western uh, West Meridia has no major items in Chozo, and yet I still feel like it is an impactful zone. Um, four portals and also some unique scenarios that could come up in terms of routing. Uh, I can say that with confidence because it literally, <laughs> I mismanaged the West, West Meridia thing yesterday. So, um, yeah, still kind of neat. Even though it doesn't have items, I still think it plays a pretty interesting role in a lot of the seeds. Yeah, West Meridia is always like, because it does have four portals. So it can definitely lead to a lot of interesting plays, especially with or without gravity. Some of these getting a lot harder to traverse. Zeb going ahead and picking up Plasma at the uh, boss reward location in Wreck Ship, immediately shooting up to 300 damage with his charge upgrade as well. Plasma uh, has, has and will always plasma? be super duper strong. I, it's it's incredible how strong that item is no matter what you do. It's like you nerf it massively? Well, if you nerf it, people get the pitchforks out on you. So, uh, But yeah, it's... Uh, Super strong with starter charge, super strong with starter plus, super strong in the regular game. It's There's really nothing you can do to nerf it other than reduce its damage. Not only does it do massive damage, it's essentially kind of like a mini screw, a screw attack. Because like like if you know what you're doing with it, you, you can use it very effectively to protect yourself in lower north fair. Oh ho, baby! Well, this is going to work out so good for Nick Player. Just coming up Forgotten Highway, going to have both suits at about 20 minutes in, and then make his way out. I'm trying to remember where Rex, the entrance to Rex ship was. It was the tube, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. So, yeah, I like Nick cool. Player's position here. I don't like coming in the back way because it's a little slower, but the fact that he'll be doing uh, Rex ship with gravity and... Space Jump will actually make some of these rooms a good bit quicker. So, um, here pretty soon, he's going to essentially be in go mode. Uh, other than energy, he'll have both suits, assuming he gets the wreck ship E-Tank. He'll have both suits, um, his Batwoon access, and so and he's got, obviously, a starter charge beam. Um, so, yeah, looking pretty strong so far. Yeah, and he's definitely picking up that Plasma as well. This is going to be... Yeah, and Zeb's also... Zeb hasn't seen um, Forgotten Highway yet, so that's just like another portal knowledge. He's just going to go ahead and orphan 
Uh, I mean, he doesn't really have the movement to traverse it anyways. That would be a huge risk. But I'm just thinking about that being quite an advantage for Nick player. You know, out of all the portals, there are three that are essentially one ways. And we've only seen one so far, which is Kraid. So I think, you know, for Zeb, he's always going to be wondering, too. It's like, especially as this goes on, like, is this going to be Croc? Is this going to be Torian? So when you're in that sort of end game scenario and you're trying, if you haven't seen those and you're whittling it down, like Forgotten Highway is definitely not one of the ideal scenarios. Actually, I'm glad you brought that up, Koopo, because we can put this out into the into the universe and maybe get some feedback on this. We have talked as a dev team about our area randomization and how like sometimes we wonder if the percentage chance of getting one of those like really bad 50 50s where like two dead ends are are like in the in two of the three ball zones that only have two connections and if you get them spread too far apart it's like sometimes races can be decided on like 50 50 coin flip we've talked a little bit about you know would we prefer to put oh. in some mechanism about like uh yeah the uh enrage uh, yeah, some mechanism sorry. about limiting that from happening, like only allowing one dead end on on one of the the two parts. But uh, so far, we have not made any you know decisions on that. So, but you never you never enjoy seeing that. It's it can lead to some interesting race scenarios. I can say, as someone playing one of those seeds, it's never something I enjoy getting. Um, but you know, the best way. To test this out though is just to run a bunch of seeds and see how it goes so that's why feedback is so critical and things like this to just go ahead and help us understand you know like what the actual impacts of it are versus us like theorizing about it Nick about to get his plasma. And then Zeb is about to get gravity, and then he'll be doing his West Meridia via his West Meridia care package, as uh, mentioned by Audra. Another example over there on Zeb's side of plasma being bad for the Super Metroid uh, society or community in general. Not, not us players, but the actual in-game community. Another regular missile abandoned uh, because of uh, already having plasma. And the plasma trauma is real. Okay, and then both players, I think, have now been skipping power bombs. Zeb's just officially looked at that one and said, no thanks. But, yeah, he is going up. And then, yeah, picking up his third E-Tank, which puts him at the energy minimum to go ahead and complete the game. Nick Player just took a save at Rex ship. Yeah, not a big fan of that one. Um, this is a scenario where, especially since you already know the other portal on the right side, there's really no need to save. If you're going to come check this, you just need to check it and keep what's there, especially since you have gravity um, and space jump, etc. Um, there's yeah, really no just... time. There's really no time to save from taking the to, from taking the save. In fact, you're actually eating up time. Yeah, I was. You know, I understand it if you're on like low health. You have you don't have gravity. You don't have a lot of the movement to kind of really quickly get back. But I mean, Nick Player has fantastic movement. He's got all the items you would typically want to go ahead and traverse this. But I don't know. Also, maybe it's just like a force of habit, or who knows? But yeah, I'm definitely. That save definitely threw me for a minute. There's actually something you can do, even if you are low health, that can kind of help protect you against anything bad. Do you know the trick? Go slow and be careful? Practice. Oh. Yeah, no, I don't know that one. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Oh, that is... <laughs> I hate when that happens. I feel for Nick right there. You uh you get some good momentum out of that room, you avoid bonking the door, and then you just barely clip the the um Zeb. The edge there. Oh. Alright, Zeb is gonna just go No, he's decided to bail. He found the front of Lower Norfair. 
But since we already know the back, or we don't know the back, he's just decided he's gonna leave it. Okay, each player two bosses down. Where do you think each of them is going right now, Kip? Well, I, here's the thing. It sometimes is difficult for me to provide like super accurate commentary because like because I'm watching it and not playing it, the flow of the run for them is different than what I'm looking at. Does that make sense? Like it's hard for me to understand the flow. I'm a little surprised. There's probably a good reason Zeb makes good decisions a lot. There's probably a good reason Zeb chose not to do Lower Norfare earlier, but I don't know. Given the circumstances, I might would have just gone ahead and get, gone for it. You got pretty decent ammo. It's not going to be a super slow fight. You've already got a good uh, beam damage, and you've got space jump and screw attack in both suits. So I probably would have just knocked that out. Um, even if that, even if the dead end is Torian. Um, Jeez. Even if it's Tori in there, I mean, you don't know for sure. Like, sometimes in these areas, I, let's put it this way. I have gotten beaten by trying to be too thorough in races. Mm. So sometimes you just got to, like, kind of hope it goes your way. But I don't know. I don't think it would have been that bad. Yeah. I mean, I at the same time, I also understand we do have, it's like two dead ends. We have Torian and Croc, just completely unknown. Lower Norfair, especially going back, doing the reverse acid dive is not the most fun thing in the world. Aside from like fun, it's just not very fast. So I could see why it's like trying to finish exploring some of that and hoping to find either an alternate route or like a new clear way to go through would help. Meanwhile, Nick player is going to go ahead and clean out a single chamber before going ahead and checking the portal up here as well and stacking some more supers. Super count in this seed has actually been quite healthy, I think. We're uh, almost, now our Nick player is at 30 and Zeb's at 25. Oof, and then planting right into Spacer. So that is also not the item you're looking to get, but I think, you know, they pretty much have everything they're gonna want for going through this seed. I mean, ice would be nice. I'm not a huge fan of, like, if you don't have wave beam, I'm not a huge fan of going top right here. That was a lot of missiles wasted, and it was a lot slower than just, like, going to the room normally. Um, I mean, especially with, like, space jump and speed, I feel like, I mean, uh, you know, basically it's like going up and traversing, like, after the pit is quite fast, but, I mean, that might just, just be a, a preference thing. The problem with it is even if you get it, it's not, it's like, you have to get it very early and then it's still not that fast. I'm not, I don't, I don't like taking risks for things that even when you get it, it doesn't really reward you very much. You're a big risk, big reward kind of guy? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I don't mind risk. It's just that like, the, there needs to be like a tangible reason that I would be excited about getting it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. Okay, and Nick is going ahead and skipping speed. I actually like this. I think at this point, it's just, it's go time. It's, right now, it's just all about portal knowledge. Uh, these settings do not have heat shield double jump, but they do have the uh, multiple charge beams. This is uh, this is not Dash Classic. Uh, you can go to, well, it's the URL that's on this restream, dashrando.net forward slash SI24, and you can see all the settings that we're using for this entire tournament. Yeah, I kind of feel like we're still fighting the, uh, <laughs> the uh, sort of, I guess, the way the original dash was set up when we only had one mode at like back in 2018, 2019, whenever it was, 
basically for anybody who hasn't been following dash for the last couple of years we essentially have most of the primary in fact i think we have all of the primary settings in place for for people to compete with what has been in most of our tournaments um we've added a few other things that are you know optional uh as well so it's just depending on what you want yeah i think you know the way that we've described it and the way we put it on our web page as well is that uh dash as a randomizer is all about racing there's many reasons you can want to randomize and play like a new version of the game but for this randomizer for dash it's all about racing so we are only interested in making decisions that will lead to really really good races so that was a pretty good fight for zeb there on ridley uh, looks like Nick Player is doing uh, Eastern Meridia first. Have we found our Torian yet? We haven't found Torian yet. Is there only the top of East Meridia left, the highway portal? I can't quite read the... Well, we don't have Croc out either, so there has to be at least one more portal. Gotcha. So no matter what... Well, I take that back. Actually, Nick Player's best move here would be to not go check it and hope that it's Croc, essentially. I think the other two, from what I'm reading on the tracker, is that we haven't seen Moat, and we haven't seen the back of East Meridia. If you want to know the power of supers like I've been talking about on comms for years, Zeb's got plasma beam but and one of the charge upgrades and yet is still looking for supers supers are really honestly supers remain powerful uh throughout any run just about with almost any loadout that you have all right so we're gonna get a pretty critical piece of info right here that's torian yeah. all right so if nick first of all nick's not in go mode completely because he doesn't have three energy tanks um and Zeb's only got three. I don't. I think we're only missing one of the logical ones, right? Yeah, I think so. And then Nick goes ahead and he picks up Wave, which has increased his beam damage by two hundred. So that's definitely going to help speed up the uh, Mother Brain fight a lot. This is actually, in my opinion, kind of a bad situation for Nick. Like, where is he going to find his t his two required E tanks? Yeah, I mean, hopefully along the way. I forget if he went ahead and he checked like those two miners that are up in the aqueduct room or not. But yeah, I think Nick definitely, I mean, he could, you know, get by with like a reserve as well. But, you know, with one boss left, which is like Ridley in Lower Norfair, there's not oh, tons. Yeah, there's not tons of... Uh, item checks in there except for i mean there's a couple in the back but you know with needing two e-tanks there that could definitely that's not the most likely situation nick doesn't know it but i think this decision is ultimately going to decide the race um yeah yeah this is going to be just time. once once you bail on croc assuming he bails on croc that's definitely going to cost some time I mean, or maybe he goes and does Croc and he gets his E-Tanks straight away, but Croc is such a long fight, even with Charged Plasma, to like then get the items, the cutscene, it's, it's slow. Yeah, at this point, Zeb just has a much more efficient um, way through the game and is going to actually benefit, assuming that he checks the, Dra the Space Jump item at Dragon, um, he'll even get another update. Uh, to his damage, so yeah, Zeb Zeb's looking pretty good cruising. Nick hasn't done anything that I would consider like a bad play or wrong or anything. It's just that sometimes the way the layout goes with how you check things just either do or don't go in your favor, um, and that can happen to anybody. You know, interesting. Nick got both suits first and had what looked to be like a pretty a pretty solid route, but just the way it's like the rest of it kept unfolding, it just became less and less optimal. Um, whereas I think things just ended up sort of, it's like unfolding for Zeb and like a little bit, just like a little bit of a more optimized route. I also gotta say, when you're doing commentary, it's really hard to keep track of which player has what portal knowledge. Because we've got total portal knowledge for what each player has seen, but seeing 
Trying to remember what Nick has seen versus what Zeb has seen gets really complicated. Listen, I'm not just saying this to be funny. I'm being serious. It's hard for me to keep track of portal knowledge when I'm the one racing, and it's just me. So, yeah, trying to do it on comps for two people is really hard. This is why we rely on chat. Oh, that's actually kind of sad. There was an energy tank right there that Nick could have oh. had access to, and he, he didn't check it. I mean, Nick didn't check that, but at the same time, you know, there's probably so much running through Nick's mind for, you know, okay, it's like, it's probably ammo, I don't need ammo, like, I've got this, like, I don't want to keep, like, over-checking for ammo. True, I, one, what I will say, though, is that is literally I mean, that is a very one of, like, a handful of the check. fastest minor checks in the game, so it's, it's almost like a standard check, unless you are just literally... 100% not picking up anything else in the game. Yeah, I mean, I, he's gonna watch this back and feel bad about that for sure. That's, uh, that could have been pretty helpful. Nice short charge on that to get up there. Okay, a little Debbie microwave up there. Double supers, yeah, I mean, that's good in a lot of circumstances, but definitely not what we're looking for here. I just feel really bad for Nick because not having enough E-Tanks is not the kind of stress that you hardly ever feel when you're playing Super Metroid Randomizer. I, I don't know if I've ever seen this scenario out of all the races I've watched that the E-Tanks for a Chozo Seater is like, that's like the limiting factor for like you not being in go mode. And he's managed his health or energy really, really well. Like honestly, running through the entire game, even with both suits with, with just this much is not exactly the easiest thing to do. So he's, he's done a great job. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Nick, Nick's control of this game is like pretty unbelievable. I, I definitely saw him, I think it was in the multi-category tournament like a couple of years ago thinking, wow, this is pretty good. But I think he has really upped his game in like the last... I don't know how long it's been, but I watched some of his races, um, more recent ones, and they were uh, devastating to watch. And by the way, uh, I'm I'm glad we you know we don't force the runners to. Oh, I think he's going to get an E tank maybe at ice if he goes up here. We don't force our runners to schedule at any given time, but luckily um, our runners were kind enough all four of the semifinal participants were kind enough to schedule their races today where they didn't impede on one another so um, no matter how many uh, races this takes for this match to complete we will have um, Audra versus uh, Derp a little bit later this evening so make sure you guys uh, not only enjoyed this match but another great semifinal match coming up here in a few hours as well and then we'll crown a champion tomorrow I'm really excited um I got to tell you, Koopa, when we first started doing uh, talking about doing this, I really enjoy the long tournaments, but at the same time, something super quick like this, just like, hey, man, we're just going to play a bunch of Super Metroid over the course of a few days, is really fun to me. So uh, I've been really pleased with um, just how this event has gone. Yeah, me too. I mean, I obviously love like the long tournaments. I love League. I love, you know, having a bunch of matches to watch each week. But having been more on the organizer side, an admin side of this one i have an all-time <laughs> a newfound respect for how much this uh it takes to put something like that on so being able to cram it's like a quick one over the weekend is really uh yeah i hope we get to do more of these like more, yes. more frequently we it's made it spring invitational i'd kind of like to do three or four of these a year so maybe we'll have like a spring a summer a winter and a fall invitational you know just Hey, every once in a while, we're gonna we're gonna do this. Maybe we can even come up with a schedule far in advance, so it's like, hey guys, three months from now, we're planning on doing this weekend thing. If you want to clear your schedule because you want to participate, great. If not, you know, no problem. But um, I think having multiple of these a year to go alongside our big tournaments would actually be pretty fun. Yeah, no, I I completely agree. Having these little these little uh, smaller invitationals is uh, definitely something that's very welcome to me. Uh, are we, are, have we checked Maze? We didn't check Fire Fleas or any much of the Lower Norfair back ones, did we? 
Zeb checked, I think, the main ones. He checked um, the one at he Three Musketeers. He checked the Hoda Ruby, and then he checked um, Power Bombs of Shame, but I don't think he looked at uh, Fire Flays or anything like that. Also, Zeb entering in to Turian around 38 minutes. Gonna use some power bomb strats to go ahead, set that first one early, get all those Metroids nice and together, dance them around. I need to relearn this strat. I used to know how to do this stuff, and then I forgot, and then just never relearned it. You know when you were growing up, when someone would say like, "I've forgotten more about X than you know" or whatever, and you'd be like, "That's stupid. How could you forget stuff?" I actually think that statement makes a lot of sense now because I've forgotten a lot of things in this game. They say something about age and wisdom. I can't really remember what it is, but yeah, that kind of checks out. Yeah, that could be a that could be a, a scam though. It might just be, <laughs> it might just be old people trying to get some edge when they don't really know very much. <laughs> Not everybody who's old really understands, but some people do, I guess. But it's always definitely me. Right, right. Yeah, those are really excellent rooms by Zeb there. Handled all four of them uh, very well with the power bombs. And um, I can't remember if Zeb is a person that goes for uh, baby skips without the high jump boots and speed booster. I am not one of the, the people that do, does that. I have to have both. Like the only skip that I know is using the traditional equipment, but it looks like he's damaging down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna confess, I actually don't know how to do baby skip. I've never learned. It's probably something I should learn. That's well, something. here's the thing. I'm, I would never discourage someone from learning any kind of tech they're interested in. What I will say is if you are primarily doing rando, I don't think it is something that needs to be high on the list of priorities for quite some time. Uh, but, you know, if it's something that you like, go for it. Really nice crystal flash strat here by Zeb. Going ahead and skipping that refill. Is this actually faster? With this, I guess with this beam it is. I wonder what the threshold would be. We'd have to math it out. What the threshold would be for, for beam damage to lose 4,000 damage worth of uh, projectiles here. Regardless, it's more interesting to see. I don't think I've seen that in a long time. Yeah, no, it's cool. Now he literally, because he did that, he literally, not not that he's not going to, he's going to get it very quickly. But because he did that Crystal Flash, he has to get the Speed Zeb skip or else he won't be able to get through um, Mother Brain 1. Another thing I'm bad at besides not being able to do baby skip is understanding how much longer someone's going to be here, like average times once they hit Torian, etc. What do you, I mean, based on this equipment and what, how Zeb's rolling, you're thinking we're looking at like a sub 50 for this? Oh, easily sub 50, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it, again, it, it's somewhat difficult to tell. This fight is going to end up being really fast i think what is it going to be like 36 shots or something like that um and then you got i'm going to put it at like like a 47 something like that like a low 47 maybe something like that well yeah i mean barring anything unforeseen i think uh it's pretty safe to say zeb's got this one in the bag Wait, where's Nick Player going? 
Oh, he still doesn't have that extra E tank. Oh, man. Yeah, I feel really bad for Nick. For, you know, one thing that's good, though, is like... We, it, I'm not ever suggesting that it feels good to lose. Everyone would love to, to win, right? But it is nice to find out that when, like, in a race where you do lose, that, like, you didn't lose because of, of a, a particular thing. Like, in this case, he's not losing just on the E-Tanks alone. You know what I mean? Um, right now, it might feel that way, but when he finds out later that, you know, probably the biggest contributing factor was just, unfortunately, nothing he could control about some of the portal layout and some of the time wasted. I mean, honestly, if you're Nick, it's, you know, it's 44 minutes, like, you know, and you're almost ready to go to Turian outside of energy. That's not, like, the worst feeling. That's not, like, a... I mean, that'll kind of work. Need another one. But, uh, yeah, at 44 minutes, you know, you're thinking it's like, okay, it's like I'm ready to go. Just got to clear one little thing, and hopefully you can knock that out in, like, a minute or two. Less than that. Like... I gotta ask the chat a question. How many times in your life have you found a reserve? Have you been uh, relieved to find a reserve at landing site PBs? <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen that happen. It's like, oh yes, this is exactly what I wanted. Hey, look right. at that! Nice. There we go. There we go. <laughs> When we're talking bare minimum, we're, uh, yeah, we're really, we're really getting there. That trash can and an E-Tank really pulling through there for Nick. Man, that land, <laughs> that landing site and gauntlet energy tank and reserve is undefeated. I will never forget the SGL 23 match where three reserves actually decided the winner of a race. Nick about to enter into Torian at 46 minutes almost. While Zeb went ahead and just finished Mother Vein 3 on the way out. Did you see that face that Zeb just made a second ago? No, I missed it. That's the face of somebody being like, man, I really am fast. I'm running like two mid 40s in this tournament and we're not even finished yet. He is surprised by his own alacrity. Must be nice. Is alacrity even the right word? I'm going to have to relook up that word. Maybe I used the wrong word. Yeah, that one's, uh, that one's not in my uh, vocabulary, unfortunately. No, not, no, it wasn't the right word, but it kind of works. Not exactly what I was going for, but still, we'll, we'll let it slide. We understood what you meant. It's all good. Okay, get your GG's in chat. Zeb is now finishing sub 47 minutes. Look at that. 46.56. Wow. Sick time. Excellent performance. Great job, Zeb. Also showcasing several really, you know, cool tricks and kind of uh, tech in this run. Played very well. I, I feel like Nick played really well, too. Just uh, this one went in, the, in Zeb's favor. Yeah, I mean, I don't think, you know, Nick made any, like, majorly wrong decisions or anything like that it's just how the map worked out and the route just uh yeah rando did rando okay so we're gonna come back in about 10 minutes and we're gonna go ahead and have our second race of this best of three uh if nick wants to go ahead and take this he's got to take both races zeb just needs one more to go ahead and get into the finals Hey, Nick has been in this situation before and came through though, so Man. I don't I don't doubt the guy. I what I'm excited about is we got a we got a good race ahead of us. I felt like this one was really interesting. We just need uh, one more. We just need maybe two more. Hopefully, two more. Yeah, so as I much guess Super Metroid today as possible. That's right. So I guess we'll, will we take a little bit of a break here and let them get set up for the second race. All right. Also, quick shout out to Jestro for tracking all of this as well. Signed on for all three. Uh, tracking legend. Indeed, our guy Jestro. So yeah, we'll take a, a quick break, y'all. Stick around. Game two will be coming up here shortly. And um, yeah, we'll be back with uh, more semifinal action here in just a little bit. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I think I went early, sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Dash Spring Invitational 2024. We are on day three, which is the semifinals. This is match one of the semifinals between Zeb316 and Nick Player 21 uh, We saw Zeb take down a game one victory with a sub 47 an excellent time excellent performance nick player also played well uh just some things just worked out for zeb a little bit better once again my name is kip and i'm joined again by Kupo. welcome back Kupo. yeah thanks for having me kip feels great i think ground one we definitely saw a bunch of great movement from both players a bunch of great decisions this should also be a pretty close one i think as well and I'm not going to root for anyone, but, uh, you know, I wouldn't be mad at a game three. <laughs> right. Yeah, it would be cool if it went to game three, but I don't ever root for anything like that specifically just because, you know, you just want you just want the, the, the person who plays the best to win. Yeah. I mean, regardless, I think, you know, we got an interesting set of sayings. We got two really good players here. So let's just see how this unfolds. Um, speaking of the settings, if you're just tuning in, so for this tournament, we're running one set of settings. You can find out all the info while we get synced up um, at the URL that's on your screen, dash rando.net SI14 or SI24. And that is, uh, we're doing a Chozo item split, area randomizer, vanilla bosses. And then we're also doing a, an item split of 211. And yeah, so far it's led to a lot of uh, pretty interesting outcomes for how people... Oh, and starter charge as well. Uh, Kip, do you want to talk to us about how that starter charge works? Yeah, just very simple. It starts the game with a, a charge beam that does one-third damage. In this particular setting with starter plus, there is one on the logical Chozo statues that'll get you to two-thirds of the damage, and then there's a third one out in the wild that you could technically pick up if it becomes available that could get you to the full uh, amount. Uh, the sort of reason for including this is just from a meta perspective, having a little bit different of an option for the flow of the game and how things work. Uh, that's also why we tried this tournament out with the 2 one one I still think Starter and Starter Plus can work fine with a 3-2-1 um, distribution, but so far, I, I have found this to be pretty interesting. I, I think the settings in this tournament have worked pretty well together. No, I definitely think so. I think we've had a bunch of really compelling races. And uh, speaking of item distribution, we've actually got the full kit um, in this uh, blue Brinstar, which is, uh, I don't think I've seen that too many times. So we had the, aside from Morphing Ball, the, uh, we did have Alpha Missiles as vanilla, and then we ended up picking up a Super and Power Bomb pack. And that is leading us to going ahead Picking up that other uh, power bomb pack, and we're gonna check meme portal, get some knowledge about where this is going. And I think last time this red led to red brinstar, so I'm curious if this is gonna lead somewhere similar. If this is gonna lead to like back of LN, oof, yeah, that's not what you want to see right now. However, picking up two power bomb packs, that's going to be good for picking up 230 and going ahead and um, being able to check under like old mother brain. Usually, when you only have one power bomb pack, you usually you know have to forego one of those. Yeah, the act, uh, the two on one minor distribution. On the one hand, you do get less. Uh on average less supers but it does make power bombs happen uh with a little bit higher frequency and sometimes that can actually impact some of the early game stuff which i think is kind of cool um so yeah good point about that second power bomb pack coming in right there yeah solid climb right there for nick player and so yeah let's go ahead and see what uh 230 is going to go ahead and like yield us Hopefully something exciting. Oh, baby! Man, that's two seats in a row with early speed booster. Alright. This is gonna be a, another jet seed, I guess.
The one of the other things for people who are maybe newer to like watching some of these randomizers is even though we have a Chozo item split where just the Chozo and the boss rewards hold the main item pool is that you do need to be able to get something to break walls um, by the time you hit uh, Bomb Teresa here. And it's bombs, and Nick is skipping that because I, he did pick that up. So I yeah. wouldn't skip that, but I also lost my race against Nick yesterday by I think eighteen seconds, and that's probably about how long it took me to fight BT. So uh, I, I can't blame it. I would pick that up, but I'm also out of this tournament, so maybe don't listen to me. But uh, Zeb is going to go ahead and pick that up. I think just for like the movement alone. I mean, they do have the can fly ability uh, in logical terms with uh, speed, but you know, it's not quite as ergonomic sometimes as having, yeah, as having bombs. And even with supers, that makes that BT fight super trivial. There's too many spots, like early on in a seed, not knowing what is to come, there's too many spots where I believe that um, there would be a lot of value in having bombs. Um, it is definitely not an item that is typically the difference between winning and losing, but at the same time, uh, usually I like having an early... Ooh, another early crate. Very similar to the last seed. And... Did the audio just cut out? Uh, I'm not sure. Nope, there we go. Alright, so with vanilla bosses, this is going to be a vanilla crate, so let's see what crate is going to go ahead and give us here. Uh, with Chozo, this is just going to be like the one boss reward item, and while that's happening, Zeb's going to show us what's in Gauntlet, and it is X-Ray. You know, uh, I think it's better to just go ahead and cross that item off, knowing you don't have to come back to that location in case that could have been something nice, but uh, yeah, definitely not the item you are looking for. All right, and at six, almost seven minutes in, Nick has more energy than he had <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the last seat almost. <laughs> so I think this is running a little bit more in Nick's favor. You know, it, Nick probably feels right now, you know how sometimes you don't go to the grocery store for a while and you, for several days you've been looking in the pantry and there's nothing there and then you finally go grocery shopping and then you have everything again? This is probably what he feels like right now. I live in Europe, Kip. I go to the grocery store every day. <laughs> oh, well, that is definitely harder to do where I live. But uh, anyway, maybe, I, 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 maybe I, I, that I wasn't as relatable as I thought right. it would be. Pretty healthy start so far, both runners having two tanks and not ex the exact same pickups as well. Okay, so I imagine Zeb is going to go ahead and do Crate as well, just sort of in uh, Nick Player's trail right now, just purely off of that gauntlet play that... Um, Zep did earlier. Nick going ahead and opening that up. He's going to take the save station. This is one of the new mini save stations that one of the devs, uh, Cassidy, went ahead and put in for us. I I really like these. I got to say these are well. I think it's like lead to some really interesting racing decisions for going ahead and making checks or you know potentially it's like doing like a little bit of it's a, a riskier play. We saw Zeb do this last race instead of Nick. Do you think Zeb's also going to go ahead and do early X-ray? Probably, um, given the current situation with and another energy tank. Uh, but yeah, I would I would assume Zeb would probably do it again. And it is raining E in this seed, especially since those helpful dash dev 
team members added that save beneath x-ray, I think it's uh, even more uh, incentivized. Oh, Zeb missing the quick kill there. Between that and DT, this might be uh, might be uh, that might be the time. A nice recovery on that. And we're gonna go ahead on Nick's screen, see the rest of what Red Brin has to offer, along with what that space item is. Have we checked the top of Red Tower? Uh, I don't I think, so. think so. I don't recall seeing it. Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. Yeah, for all those that haven't done commentary, it's uh, it can be quite tricky to go ahead and keep track of like both screens. What's exactly happening while trying to provide something insightful, anyways? Yeah, both of them went down. Thanks for that, DJ. And then just a missile. So I imagine we're going to go ahead and see... Yeah, Nick's already going ahead and setting up for what's going to happen at Meridia Tube. And then we're going to just go ahead and scout out where the rest of these portals are going to go. Uh, there will be another match after this one if... Uh, Nick Player pulls this out. This is a best of three with Zeb taking the first match. Uh, that is noted in the uh, Samus helmets. Maybe maybe we should be careful. Player. Maybe we should be careful with our terminology. There will be another match oh, there will after be this race. today. This is race two of this match. There will be another match, uh, semifinals match after this, like two hours or so from now, I think. Yeah. Um, but uh, but as far as race. This will go to a race three if Nick if Nick wins. Yeah. I wasn't trying to, like, correct you, but just theoretically, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. Yeah, yeah. No, that was 100% correct. I think I just, like, uh, misread and skimmed that. But, yeah, there will be the other match, as you're stating, uh, just after this race. And then hopefully another one, to, or we have one more tomorrow, which should be the finals. How does it feel to be the person that somewhat misused the word alacrity earlier now telling you how to say a word? Um, you know, we speak pretty one day. It's uh, it's been a long weekend, uh, Kip. I'm allowed to uh, fumble things every now and again. <laughs> right. No, I'm with you. I technically I I do that a lot too. Like sometimes I'll just randomly say the thing, but in this case, I just wanted to be clear that we actually will have another uh, set of races, um, yeah. here in a few hours. Yeah, and it's really great that, um, like you mentioned, it wasn't uh, required, but both sets of, or both of these matches, even if they both went to a best of three, wouldn't overlap with each other. So we've got a couple good hours of Super Metroid ahead of us. That's right. And I believe that race is also going to be on Speed Gaming 1. Yeah, I think so. Speed Gaming, we've had a lot of races on several of the Speed Gaming channels, but in particular the, the main channel the last few days. Really appreciate them for uh, spotlighting our event. And shout out to Apathy Duck for uh, SG member, but also member of the Super Metroid community for helping us out with this event. It's yeah, been Duck a real, real good out. event. Duck has helped out massively on this tournament. It took me through how to go ahead and run quite a few different things, and I think a few other people... Um, for this tournament as well, so really appreciate all the time and training that he's put into this. All right, Zeb finding the croc entrance over here, while Nick going to go ahead and check Spore Spawn. And there's the boots. Yeah, seeing high jump boots after you've got speed, definitely a welcome sight. Speed can speed without high jump, definitely messes with your jump height. Uh, and not the most... Uh, most, not the most fun way. Yeah, and I think really what it is for maybe not every single player, but for for a lot of us, you know, obviously there there are people. Oh, there's a there's a wild charge upgrade. That is not the logical one. 
but obviously there are people out there that play Super Metroid Randomizer that have not done a significant amount of speed running, but there's several of the people in the in the Super Metroid Randomizer scene that uh, maybe even got started with speed running first. And so like there's just so many categories where you have both and your muscle memory for a lot of the rooms is based on that. And so when you only have high jump boots and not speed booster or the reverse, it's just that uh, the familiarity is not always there unless you've practiced a lot of that stuff. So uh, I always feel really happy if I have one or the other when I see the other one show up. Yeah, I'm always definitely happy to have both. I mean, I come strictly from like a rando, uh, rando sense. I've never really done anything vanilla and um, I always just love seeing high jump boots when I've got speed because having speed without it can be so annoying where all your jumps just feel slightly shorter than you uh, really, really planned for them to be. Okay, well, definite difference from last seat. We're seeing quite a bit of E in this, and we're still seeing really, really, really small amount of supers. I, you know, by this time in the last seat, I think we had like almost like 20 or 30 at this point. I like that play by Nick right there. You don't often see people um, running underneath New Bridge to uh, get more supers. That's really a heady play. I like that. No, it's a really great farm spot, especially when, like, uh, you know, especially in Green Brand, it's definitely something you need. And with, you know, 40 beam damage, you know, every super counts. Oh, I like that strat by Zeb, too. <laughs> we just saw an example of what I was referring to earlier. Um, well, technically, though, uh, he did get to see what he wanted. He just wasn't high enough to get a wall jump if he'd have wanted that item. But, yeah, the speed booster kind of roughed him up. Um, I feel like I say this on commentary every so often. But since you're new were to Super Metroid and haven't done as much of the speed running, have, have you ever seen the speed booster jump chart, Koopa? Uh, I believe so. I just I took away like the uh, the TLDR from it. I don't really know all the specifics. Yeah, it's just one of those visual representations of like how long you hold dash with speed booster on, like how high and or low you will be, and like it actually jumps around a good bit. So basically, for anybody out there who's curious, if you ever get a chance to see that, I would highly recommend just looking at it. You don't have to memorize it. It's not that important. It just will give you a better explanation for what is happening. And so, the, yeah, basically, uh, it'll just help you visualize maybe uh, guesstimates on certain situations with Speed Booster without high jump boots. Yeah. I do say, especially for those who are uh, watching this who don't necessarily come from a speedrunning background, that, uh, you know, as long as you can beat the game, we don't really require anything, uh, you know, very difficult to go ahead and complete, like, these dash rando seeds. So feel free to go to the website, roll on yourself, and... Uh, you know, just sort of see if you can go ahead and do it. It's you probably surprise yourself. They're really fun to go ahead and do, and then it's quite easy. You know, it'd be great to see more people starting to race these. I've well. said this multiple times. I'm glad you brought that up, but I'll say it again. Obviously, just most of the randomizers out there are usually, in some ways, based on a speed run or a series of speed runs to begin with. And one thing I've always really appreciated about Super Metroid is that. The skill ceiling is very high in this game, which makes it fun to play over a long period of time, but I actually feel like the way the game is designed from a vanilla point of view is, like, very accessible, right? No, it definitely is. I mean, there is a really, really high ceiling, but to be able to be competent at the game, and by competent, I'm not talking about doing its precise wall jumps or even wall jumping it's like, super consistently or doing gate glitches or anything like that, but just, like general movement and rolling through the game like a lot of these randomizers like you know aren't requiring suitless meridia or some of the more like esoteric technical aspects of it so it's really easy to just go ahead and like roll one and it's like oh you might surprise yourself or you're easily able to go ahead and like make it through even if it's you know you've got seven more e-tanks than like some of the runners like on screen do or like you're picking up more ammo but 
and that and the reason for that is because the vanilla game is designed in a way where that's possible so it's kind of like a you know an awesome shout out to the fact that it was designed that way to begin with that was a good fan tune fight by the way by nick player there he opted to not go with the nintendo power strat of six supers he did i get some really nice dopplers in there i didn't see exactly how many rounds that is but nick has had uh, a bunch of really good boss fights is it five? Maybe it's five supers. I can't even do the math anymore. All right, so let's see what some of these boss rewards are. Zeb just right on Nick's tail for this. I feel like we're going to get a suit and wreck ship in this race. Well, how about that? Wow. Okay. Thank you, Prophet Kip for uh, blessing us. But if you've already gone ahead and got one suit, you know, Rex Ship always gets sort of a bad rap for how long certain things can take. Are you going to go ahead, I mean, the likelihood of two suits appearing in Rex Ship not super high, but at the same time, you know, Maybe definitely. We've checked a few other places. Is that something you're going to do? Okay, so, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like, it's not super high for it to happen. Yet at the same time, there isn't any mechanism trying to stop it from happening, if that makes sense. So it's not Absolutely. like just, just yeah, because you found one doesn't mean you're, that the other one can't be there or whatever. Yeah, there's nothing in the code that says, like, for example, we have something called, like, uh, you know, restrictive suits where suits cannot show up in criteria, but there's nothing that says both suits can't show up in the same area. So, yeah. I mean, it just, you know, it just happens to be statistically unlikely, but it very well could be that's what happens, that both of them are here. So to answer your question strategically, this is just me. I'm not saying... Nothing I say do I ever feel like is the is the you know tangible one hundred percent truth for all players, but um, I probably am checking even in this exact scenario. I'm probably checking wreck ship e tank one hundred percent of the time, um, without even thinking about it, and yeah. then um, and then from there I'll make a decision about bowling. Um, I don't like to do bowling all the time, but I but <laughs> I will say I think that in Chozo it's done. Generally speaking, in races, I think it's done slightly less than maybe it should be. I don't think it should be done often, but I also don't think it's like an instantaneous skip in all scenarios either. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's instantaneous. You know, one of the other things about this mode with vanilla bosses is that the likelihood of doing like a suitless lower north air is pretty much off the table. Um, just do the inconvenience of it. it's like you're going to go ahead and do lower north air and then Ridley's lair as well. I would have preferred to have... It, this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Like, if Nick Player wasn't going to go check that back portal, personally, I think it would have been better to not have saved and then just, like, whatever the item is, you keep it. Um, I would have preferred to have kept Grapple right there. Uh, I don't think it's something that's going to drastically change the run, but at the same time, there are a few places where I think, uh, given that you've already invested the time to go get it, I think you would you would have some value in keeping it. Yeah. I mean, I understand not checking the back at the same time. There's still, you know, quite a bit left to explore. And, you know, you could end up at either like Croc or Turian, which are like, while good knowledge, definitely like not really one where you want to be at, especially if you're a game down. Like you want to, you know, go for like some of these bigger areas where there's like a lot less known. Yeah, you bring up a good point. Um, so again, I'm not saying one philosophy is correct and one is not. I actually usually don't play a certain way depending on if I'm up a game, down a game, whatever. I, I usually just kind of like approach everything relative to my... Now, I, I do make certain decisions relative to my opponent or what I think I know about my opponent, but I don't do it based on... Um, you know, if I'm up or down. So I, it could be that he's thinking that way. It, it might not be. I'm not sure, but um, yeah. I guess we'll, I guess we'll see how aggressively he plays some of this. Well, in contrast to what Nick did, Nick going ahead and bailing on um, 
that grapple beam and checking this portal to go to the back or to go to upper north there because Zeb went ahead and kept that grapple. I did actually didn't see if he saves, saves Scum, but he's going to go ahead and check Forgotten Highway right here and see what he can go ahead and pick up while Nick's doing these hell runs. I don't think he saved. The only bad thing he can really run into is Lower North Air. I mean, I guess Croc. Or Torian. Or Torian. You know. Which... I mean, yeah, that's that a good one. Pretty great, yeah. Really like this play by Zeb right here. Um, I, I he might not be paid off for it, but I think this too. is a good check right here for these minor items. Yeah, really minor thing that Zeb did, but he just jumped up just to save a little bit more energy before he did that spark. Like, really clever, knowing that he doesn't have Barry and he's about to go through to where these enemies tend to hit like a little bit harder. So what? Okay, Nick going ahead and picking up Ice Beam. That's definitely great for end game and like a little bit of extra beam damage. I think one of the big things that Audrey's pointing out in chat, which is definitely true, is how good this might be for Zeb, depending on well, a what the item is that Zeb might go ahead and pick up here. But then also where this other East Meridia portal leads to. If this is like a dead end, that's definitely not ideal. Having to traverse back through East Meridia, then to go back through Forgotten Highway. Wow. If this fits out into something like, you know, something really good, this could be a very, very optimal route. While true, technically, even if the portal situation here is not great, uh, Zeb would still technically have outs for this being efficient because if Varia is in Eastern Meridia, um, yeah. then it would be, basically the logic would be trying to force you to backtrack anyway. So um, yeah, I guess we'll we'll see here. I mean, Zeb was also you know especially in that like uh, the in game or in person tournament that we did last year. Zeb definitely known for skipping Varia like where possible. It's just like I mentioned earlier, not really. Uh, a viable option for these settings based on the fact that you've got vanilla Ridley at lower north there. And also with the super count being at five, you know, 26 minutes into the game. That is, yeah, that is really low supers thinking about it. It's the lower, it's the lowest supers possible. I mean, we could be at zero. Nah, you couldn't get here. Oh, yeah, you're right. right. Well, I mean, you might could get there. I'm just saying there are places you could not get to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you couldn't get to this part because of the green gate before uh, Dragon. If that makes sense. All right, Nick going ahead and cleaning up some of that portal knowledge. Yeah, I actually uh, didn't get to see what those were, but they should be updated on the tracker shortly. That grapple beam going to come in handy here. If Dragon ever decides he wants to, he wants to start that swoop. Main Street and back of LN. Okay. So if this is Varia at the back, or behind Dragon, this is definitely not a good location for that to be for Nick. No, if Varia uh, is here, that would be essentially almost game over. Yeah, I think Mass is pointing out in the chat, Theoretically, it is technically possible for there to be only one super and a seed, but it would just be like astronomically unlikely for that to happen. All right, Nick, let me go ahead and check the speed location. While he's doing that, we're going to go ahead and see uh, 
Zeb go ahead and make his way through to the back of East Meridia. And this, what this portal leads to is definitely going to be a really key moment in this speed and pathing. Probably going to check plasma first would be my assumption. We'll see. Okay, well, there's the logical scooper, I believe. There is one positive, one small silver lining about not having many supers. So it makes more of an impact when you get one? It means you, you're not farming for them along the way, because there's nothing to farm. Yeah, at the same time, we don't really have like much beam damage, though. You know, Both players sitting at like 40 beam damage is... Uh... Dude. Low ammo, 40 beam damage sounds like a dream of the brain, too, to me. You, um... I don't think we're quite aligned on what fun means, but, um... I mean, if this is what you're, uh... This is the vibe, then I... Sounds good. Alright, well, it did increase significantly for Zeb picking up a wave at the plasma location. Oh, that was a nice little tech there by Zeb. I didn't, I didn't actually know you could do it that way. Yeah, that's cool. I gotta go practice that. So what yeah, was that? Think... Double super in Upper Norfair? Yeah, double super. That's all the right choices, time? and I think, for Upper Norfair. Is this going to be a variant croc seed? Okay, Nick Blair going ahead and setting up for this crystal flash to go ahead. I'm going to say it now. I'm calling it. I think Varia is at bowling. And the Ooh. double wreck ship suit that you were talking about earlier is, is what it was. Let's, let's see, because I don't think either player is going to, you know, be excited about going to bowling. And Zeb finding Croc, shaking, he's, he's bailing. So I'm sorry, what was that? I missed it. What was? It was Croc. Croc was at the end of East Meridia. See, this is a strange circumstance. In Zeb's situation, I probably would have just gone ahead and done it, but I don't know exactly what Zeb's thinking. It's really difficult sometimes when you get in certain circumstances to know like how each individual player would prefer to approach something, but he might be thinking, well, I've already got enough energy to where, you know, theoretically I might could do lower Norfair at some point in the, in the future. The problem with it, though, is, is like, especially relative to major minor even though you have more energy tank right energy right now to be able to do something like that you don't have enough supers because a you got to do some crystal flashing and then b in theory you're supposed to be unloading your supers on ridley if you know ridley's the lower norfair boss it'd be a lot easier to approach something like that if it was boss shuffle so yeah. anyway in his position i probably would have done croc just because I, I feel like I'm running out of good options, but that doesn't mean that I think that's necessarily the, the best play. It's just kind of one of those things. I, I mean, I would have done it as well, but again, these two players made it this far, farther than you and I, so I'm I'm curious as to like what the, I, I think we should definitely ask Zeb about it. It's like that croc. I saw him shake his head on the face cam thinking like, that's usually his uh, I'm thinking about it notion. But he did bail pretty quick. Yeah, there's not a, like, you don't really feel great about a lot of the options if you're Zeb right now. Like, this is kind of one of those situations where everything is just kind of separated and, and long, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. yeah, he chose not to do Croc and also not to do um, uh, Spring Ball. So, I would assume, considering the dead-end nature, <laughs> the extreme dead-end nature of this scenario that he's just abandoning those forever so if varia is at either of those locations and he can't manage to get enough uh resources to deal with the potential suitless lower norfair um that would be an advantage for nick but anyway we'll see what happens yeah yeah this logic and placement has definitely been uh, a little bit interesting um 
I do want to point out you can go to our website and actually read all the logic for this if you want to. It's on dashrando.net forward slash logic and you can read basically the traversal between rooms to understand like what is and isn't required and then like some of the abilities as well. Um, but yeah, this is definitely pushing its like... At this point we're just really running out of options where like Varia could be in all of them. You know, are definitely he's, in the. He's not checking he's, bowling either. He, he, I guess he's gonna try. I think, I think, here. I think he's 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 going for it, but Nick is. I mean, I I get it. That's like got more of an option. Nick, on the other hand, having already checked Upper Norfair, he's swinging right back to do. Forgotten Highway. I thought he would have tried bowling. Well, he still doesn't know. I don't. I don't think he has Bubble Mountain. So he might be thinking about that. The funny, the funny thing is, is, we've talked about this before in many races. It's like if Zeb had any kind of context for like how big of a lead technically he really did have, then he would just basically probably start checking off all the bad ones um, and still possibly be in a good situation. But obviously, you don't know that when you're actually racing. I mean, at 35 minutes in without Varia, and you've checked a lot of the places, like, I don't think either runner's feeling, like, particularly good. I think most of them have thought it's like, I've just, like, I've missed something, like, critical. But, yeah, it's really a hunt right now to see who can get Varia. I hope this isn't the seed that we find out Dash has some devastating bug that accidentally put Varia at, like, a gauntlet or something. Don't, do not commentate or curse this. Why do you even entertain this idea? Varia at Ridley. <laughs> oh, man, this is... This is going to be an interesting one. All right. I I wonder if this is this this is either going to be bowling or croc, right? Or spring ball. I mean, all of those are just like terrible locations. But see, this. All right. So, part of what I was kind of talking about earlier like i didn't specify i just was talking very generally but it's like it's situations like this when i was talking about you know most of the time people are going to skip bowling i feel though that bowling is a better option than it usually happens in a lot of races like you don't see it nearly that frequently in the actual races this is the kind of situation where i feel like you could have justified it even when you first did wreck ship because of the unknown that you had not only with the portals but also with the item set moving nice forward little happy for so me. yeah um any player right. that would have played it that way uh would have at least had more information at this point i mean at this point you know information is going to be pretty critical because I mean, at least we know from having, like, the top-down, high-level view, there are three, you know, basically three locations left, which could be all very far apart from each other, all very troll and unlikely to get checked. But, you know, yeah, being able to cross any of those out is going to be really important coming up here quite soon. So let's see what Nick Player does after taking down Dragon. You know, he's... Probably gonna go see Croc. I don't know if he's gonna go check Plasma. I imagine he does. But yeah, let's just see how he handles that part. I don't know if he will skip Croc. I'm really curious what Zeb is gonna do after he finds the two supers here. I mean, I think two supers are still, like, pretty welcome, but at the same time, it's, uh... Nick know. needs to be careful right here. Yeah, this is... Like, really careful. Do you know how much Nick has in the reserve? Oh...
Yeah, this is also why resetting that uh, grapple was uh, a I little I forgot that he didn't have grapple, yeah. My neck. The thing is, is he can with screw attack. He can play this very safely if he wants to. It's just really slow. Yeah, I mean this whole part is quite slow. Oh boy! Oh. <laughs> All right, doing that while Zeb is going ahead and farming. Wow, this is definitely, uh, clenching. There it is. There Let's go. go. All right. Nick pulling it out for the fans. While Zeb's about to pick up the other super pack here. What, what, was it an E-Tank? No, it's, a, it's another super pack here. At, um, I, I'm sorry for Nick player. Uh, I think so. No, no Spring, Spring Ball. Ball. Okay. I was going to say that would have been really convenient for him to just not have to worry about his energy, but he should be fine. I mean, I'd say, like, energy aside, that was still really handled well by Nick. He really, you know, was able to go ahead and deal with uh, a lot of what Dragon was, like, throwing at him, like... Pretty well. Definitely a very entertaining boss fight. Well, the only thing we know for sure at this point is pretty sure Zeb isn't running another 46 in this seed. No, this one is definitely... I feel like in the last seed it was, uh, you know, everything was just given to them on their path. And this one is definitely proving a little bit harder. We got E early on, which is a big difference, but like, with, you know... Supers and a lot of, uh, well, yeah, just that lack of area and lack of having, like, that clear path for, like, where to go. Having to meander around for, uh, these checks, which are what? non... The checks you normally don't want to be doing. Where is Nick going? I... Like, he knows that it's not Bubble Mountain. The only thing left is bowling and then the two other checks here. And I wonder if he's... I don't, did he check, like, this? Did he check speed? Like, the speed items and that aqueduct room? Is he trying to farm up something, maybe? No, he's just... He's bailing. Yeah, I'm... I'm I mean, that's a game. I'm a little... Con I'm confused by this play. Like... Mainly just because, you know, it's hard to know what a runner's thinking like, but in his scenario with the information that he has, I don't, I mean, unless you're just like, I'm going to risk it and just put my money on bowling and go there first, which is still a bit of a, a hasty play there. But um, other than that, I can't see a reason why to, to leave um, that zone and not check at least the other two items there, but I don't know. Yeah, so I mean, Nick doesn't know what that is, but I'm pretty sure he knows it's either Croc or it's Turian. Dude, Maybe Zeb is he... back at next ship. Uh, can you yeah. imagine if it's at bowling and they do it at the same time? I mean, this is going to be wild if that's what happens. But I mean, they're, you know, a couple seconds apart from each other. This is, be like, what? This is great. This is wild. If this ends up being Varia... Then, uh, yeah, we get, then we got a race. Well, like, not only race that, but I just want to be like, man, Nick took like such a huge risk. Oh, also, Nick does not currently have the energy to get through bowling. He could hopefully it'll come here, like some of these drops. You might have to just go through this room a couple times. He needs more than 120. 
I don't know the actual requirement. Right, never mind. I don't even. I don't even know my own randomizer. Never mind. Gravity, gravity does give some environmental protection. I, so. I wasn't gonna say anything, <laughs> but. Uh... Yeah, I mean, he's thinking about it, and I think he's just going for it. I respect the commitment. Yeah, I also like how he doesn't have the uh, the grapple beam to as a bailout in this scenario. Max, max punish for grapple grapple safe scumming. Never turn down grapple, kids. Man, grapple strikes again. All right, what's it gonna be? I'm gonna laugh so hard if this is Grog. No. Oh, <laughs> All right. So we still technically have room for divergence, because, for example, Nick could go straight to like you know spring ball and zeb could go straight to croc or something just depending on what they want to do i i yeah. assumed zeb will probably do croc first or excuse me uh spring ball first oh this is such a seed D dj webb's gonna go ahead and make a complaint about the logic i think he's well actually <laughs> i mean I, I, i'm sitting here thinking about it and i i just I don't see anything that to me seems out of it's not out of, out of whack. It's just very this is just very rare. But um but I don't see anything that would be like not possible. It's it's not that it's not possible, it's just it's not fun. <laughs> it's just really trouble. But again, this is what leads to like interesting race scenarios where it's like, okay, normally I'll get this. Like I can like I can probably bank on this for an optimal route, and now it comes down to the point where it's like none of those optimal things for either runner worked out, and it's now a race to go ahead and like find this item. And I mean, they both took like pretty different paths and made different gambles, and like you know, they're both going straight back to Forgotten Highway, which they've already been beaten the boss in East Meridia. Like, this is... yeah. I don't think s Well, Audra, can you? I guess... No, you can't because you have to get through Rex ship to get to the back portal for East Meridia. Oh, I'm sorry, not Audra. Sorry, two purple names looking very similar. Um, yeah, no, in this case you wouldn't be able to do that because you would require a super to get to... Um, to get through the green door at Rex ship. I think Zeb is going to Shack Tool. But it probably has something to do with Bubble Mountain and having Speed Booster. Like, I think the amount of energy you need with Speed Booster, maybe to get to Speed, with Speed Booster to get to the Speed Booster item, is probably like one or, or I guess maybe two energy tanks. I just don't remember where all the tanks were. But that also counts the reserve, which I think was... We were playing oh, for it was. really early in, though. Uh, David, that was only in the recall version of of, a, of the randomizer that we created, but this is, this doesn't have any crossover with that. Okay, okay so it looks like Nick is going for Plasma, which we... I believe Plasma was waved. Zeb checked that on his way out to go ahead and scope what portal was at the back of East Meridia, which did end up being Croc. I'm sorry, I'm 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 not thinking straight. Why is the speed location super locked? In this particular one? Like the um, like the vanilla speed booster location. I mean, it's got a green door before it, right? Uh, I don't know. I'm. I think I'm confused about what they're saying. I, I'll. I'll have to think about it later. Ooh, space jump. Space jump. Not. Not very. So is very at croc here? I think very is at croc, and that means Nick is closer to it if he decides to go through with it, though. Oh, oh, right, right, right. There, I'm sorry. I was thinking of 
access before Bubble Mountain. Y'all right, the green door. So I guess it's this. I guess the wave beam door is the one that is uh is the logical super, which I think they established like 15 minutes ago. All right, yeah. So what is the E tank requirement for that room? I'm going to throw that one out to chat. I'm trying to understand. Uh, I'm trying to go ahead and see what's going to happen. Nick Player is on his way to the back of East Meridia. He's going to go ahead and see what Karak is. Or see that Karak is there. And then it's just all a matter of if he decides to commit, which I think they are. Go Samus, go. Thank you, Shinrear, for the uh, massive host there. Welcome in, everybody, to semifinals match number one, game number two of the Dash Spring Invitational 20, 2024. We have a very unique situation here in which we're about to find out if our randomizer is broken or not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think everything's fine, but I think at this point, no, no, area no. Has every, every, everything, everything's fine. I am like pretty sure we're good. Listen, it, it's all Gucci. Don't worry. Well, if they never see Varia, then we have a huge problem. Yeah, I mean they're they're going to see Varia. We're good. Ironically, this is kind of one of those scenarios where um, I th I can't say for sure, but our decision to go with the two two excuse me two one one distribution instead of the three two one actually probably impacted some of the decision making here too. Because had it been a three two one seed and maybe they had gotten a few more supers along the way, um, then this would have been one of those situations where a, a various skip would have been like a more viable option. It's just that since this is vanilla and you know that, that Ridley's down there, it really changes the trajectory of how Lower Norfair works. And since they don't have that many, uh, it's kind of hard to, to pull something like that off. All right, if this isn't very, I'm gonna have concerns. There it is, all right. Thank you, JavaScript, for having our back on this. I'm going to look into this myself, too, for a moment, just to see what all was no, no, deal with this I'm, I'm, I, I talked to Mass, we're good. Oh no, I know. I'm not. I'm just saying, like, I don't remember where all the E tanks were, so I wonder, like, what the intended path for this one was. Okay, a little ammo farm up here from Nick. I gotta imagine at 52 and a half minutes, both of them last location in Varia. At the end of two duos, you know, being going through Forgotten Highway to get to East Meridia, to then get to Croc, in which both players have already done both areas, and Zeb has even gone ahead and scouted Croc and pieced out. That's that's not ideal. Uh, Zeb going ahead and gaining a tiny bit of a lead here, while Nick went ahead and did some of that farming, though. But we're going to see, I mean, these two are neck and neck, you know, in the same room right now. And it's just, uh, it's a run straight for Lower Norfair and then Turian. Sam can sense the excitement. She just came in and gave a big stretch. She wants to watch what happens at the end of this exciting race. I think she thinks there might be treats involved. Yeah, there usually are.
Personally, I think this one's coming down to grapple. I think it's coming down to x-ray. Well, no, I, I think I, I understand what you're saying. It's like essentially grapple and Nick's decision to bail on it and how much time that would have saved in that Dragon fight would have actually made the difference of the race. It was kind of a two-parter because on the one hand, I was kind of joking about like grapple's going to matter from this point forward. But in actuality, if you look at, if, if we were to, if Zeb wins this, and we were to go back and look at how much time difference there was between the two Dragon fights, it is very much on the table that it's possible that the time in the room is greater than the time, the differential in time of the race. I mean, I think both these players right now are both feeling extremely behind. Uh, I don't think either one is actually, you know, for us watching on the stream, we're like very cognizant that it's a, uh, it's a very close race, but both of them probably have no clue that they're almost like, you know, barely a room apart. Yeah, for sure. This has been a great race, though. Uh, this has been really entertaining. I, mean, I feel like this is essentially just like the polar opposite of like the last seed, though. Like the last seed, like both routes ended up like, you know, quite divergent, but ended up in like quite like similar pathings. Like wasn't like you know, like, uh, super blowout, both players, you know, made, like, just, like, a couple of decisions. This one, it's, like, it just turned into, it's, like, a divergence with a complete scramble where it converged right at the beginning. Yeah, and, you know, obviously Nick is a really good player. Um, I, I am more familiar with Zeb's overall, overall game just because I, like, if you were to count up the number of races specifically of Zeb that I've either watched or even, like, I've raced Zeb, like... I don't know, like maybe eight, nine, ten times at this point. I can't remember. But um, one thing I will say about his game is I, one of the reasons he's a strong randomizer player is because he – some 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 runners are like – excel at like certain types of seeds, but then I'm not saying they're bad at others, but maybe it's like they're just average at other types of seeds. Zeb's pretty strong at just about any type of seed, whether it's a fast or a more complex one. And um, and so I'm not surprised that that, you know – he's been able to handle both of these two different types of seeds in today's match really well. But you got to hand it to Nick, too. I mean, like, we talked last race about how he played well, but just some of the routing uh, didn't work out, you know, kind of beyond his control. But even in this race, I mean, look how close this is. Like, I think he's he's been playing really well here, too. And Nick has been doing a phenomenal job for this race. Um, I mean, like I said, it's like they were just like, you know, a room apart just like a minute ago. And for that to be, like, yeah, like, across all the divergent paths, I think that's really speaking to, like, how strong of a player Nick is. I mean, you know, Zeb, you know, obviously a strong player. Like, that just sort of goes without saying he's, like, one of the top players. But, yeah, for Nick to keep pace with this is, like, really amazing. I think this is, I mean, this is a really even matchup. Like, I, I'm... I guess Zeb's already in, like, Lower Norfair. It has, like, a pretty commanding lead at this point. But, like, I really, yeah. I would love to see them go again at, uh, at some junction in the future. Yeah, maybe this could be, like, a budding rivalry for the future. But, yeah, Zeb is in pretty clear control right now. Doesn't mean something can't happen. But as far as, like, room-to-room -room execution, given how much, how little there is left to do um, versus like how many rooms you, you get to try to make up some time. It, it seems unlikely that simple room execution alone would get you there. Um, probably gonna have to have, some, have to be something unfortunate happen. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's like, you know, simply moving a little bit faster, or like even like a lot faster through a lot of these rooms is going to make much of a difference you know like movement definitely makes like you know like a big part of it but it's definitely more micro compared to like some of like the bigger macro decisions and i think i wasn't uh 
it's hard to you know keep all of these things going in your mind but i think zeb had a bit more portal knowledge to knew exactly how to get to this like back of ella and just even if they both knew the same thing he just routed it super efficient which has really given him this like you know minute long lead at least and i think that's really going to be it's like one of the big differences Gonna finish off really with some charge, or just that solo charge, and then down. So that's down at 59.15 for Zeb, and then uh, Nick is just trailing right behind him. Unless Nick gets a really big RNG push on super drops from the, which the first one did not, um, and he's also now gonna have to use supers. He his fight should take a good bit longer. Zeb walked into that fight with I think 23 supers. Um, which, yeah. as everybody knows, the supers do double damage on Ridley, so they're very valuable. Um, so, probably, you know, Nick would probably have to farm a little bit longer. So, even on that, he's probably losing a little bit of time. And then finally, we were talking about this yesterday how <laughs> unlikely it was going to be for anybody to find to in this tournament to get to full beam combination. But here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We finally got that coveted 900 damage. Nine club, baby. Uh, I do think as well, it's like, you know, I'm thinking about all the different factors that could make this like swing and like Nick player's way, but like, I mean, yeah, it's like once you go ahead and you get that plasma beam, ammo just, ammo just sort of goes out the window, and I mean, he does have 20 more missiles, it looks like, than Zeb, but at this point it's like that plasma is just gonna absolutely plow through like Turian. This is uh, this is Zeb's match to lose. I think he's got it, and yeah. I mean, this is this has been a really, really interesting race to go ahead and see. Okay, a little reverse acid dive here from Zeb. I'm just also, I right think we forgot to toilet. mention Zeb's got space jump and has been moving a lot faster through some of the rooms because uh, I think space jump was at Spring Ball. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Zeb's cruising right now through these rooms with uh with all the items and screw attack and all that. Man, how fun is Speed Booster? Speed Booster's such an interesting, fun item. I mean, I do typically try to go fast in these, so yeah, that's that's usually why I like getting speed. I just, yeah, it's got so much utility to it. It's like once you really explore, it's like the full depth of like a speed booster from like the shine sparks to like the short charging. It's it's a really great item. Yeah, I I, I'm, I guess I'm more speaking about it relative to not randomizer, but like just the vanilla game, like how they designed it. Like not only does it make you go faster, but you get like, you know, the, the echoes and then you start doing damage to things. Like it's just kind of fascinating how you can use it throughout the game. Yeah. All right, entering into Turian at one minute, two seconds for the G4 statues. Straight down. And Nick just trailing right behind him about maybe like a minute and a half behind, I'd say. Let's see how accurate that is, though. And then, yeah, Ice making these uh, Metroid rooms like a lot easier and a lot faster than having to use power bombs. Although that second one didn't... There we go. Get down from there.
All right, baby skip, we're through. Nice skip action there by Zeb. And we will probably have our fastest uh, Mother Brain 2 fight of the tournament coming up here. The old classic 20 shot from old uh, from old route. Love to see that. Nick now making his way into Metroid room number one. It'll be, for those of you that might not be aware, just in case, Mother Brain 2 will not start red beaming until she is past 75%. Um, and since 15 shots with this beam combination is exactly 75%, she will not go to the red beam phase until the 16th shot. But once you get there, she'll start, and that's usually why in a lot of old route runs, uh, or maybe even hundo runs, uh, you only end up seeing one red beam, whereas you see a lot more red beams in like new route because you have more shots to go. Nick now going for his baby skip. Looking good so far. One more jump. Hey, the classic. That was a nice one. That looked great. Gaming. Once again, Sam has returned. She can sense the end of this race coming. That was a nice stand-up. Don't see a lot of stand-up action. Is that the first time we've seen a stand-up in this I tournament? Think, I think so. I mean, we definitely weren't seeing it last season with the E-Tank situation. All right, and we are an escape away from Zeb taking a 2-0 victory, and I think Zeb is undefeated so far in this tournament, um, unless I am mistaken. You're gonna have to verify that on challenge, but uh, you know, definitely quite a performance put on here. I can't wait to get them in to talk about this. You know, you know, essentially going from it's like both like you know checking Croc at the same time, a room away, to yeah, essentially being it's like a full escape. Uh, out. I mean, just a really, really solid performance from both. Yeah, uh, Zeb, yeah, Zeb really knocked this one out of the park. He's had a he's had a tough path here too. Um, I think last round he played Nitro. Nitro is a very, very good randomizer player. I haven't watched those yet, so. Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 know I didn't really spoil it because Zeb is playing here right now. But um, but yeah, yeah Nitro is very was, good. Nick's yeah. very good. So now Zeb will get one more final round with a really great player in the finals and we'll see what, what he's got for us right, let's get those ggs in chat for zeb 316 with a time of 108 28 and that is a look of relief on that cam that is man that is one troll seed 
right, let's see. We're going to, both these runners have said they will come in for interviews. So let's see if we can get them in. All right, we are joined right now with Zeb316, who just took that set. GG, Zeb. Yeah, GG. Um, that one was... Uh, I, I felt like at the time that I found Croc, I probably should have done it, but it's really hard. Because I feel like if I'm... So, it's such an out-of-the-way location, so if you're not doing it, you're kind of giving up the game. Um, if the item you need is there. And, like, with a seed like that, um, it was looking like Vario List was going to be possible except for no supers. Yep. Just absolutely yeah. no supers. And then, Super. like, it turned out Torium was at the front of Lornorfer anyway, so it's like, that wasn't happening. Um, but... So, yeah, I one thing I... Gonna... Oh, sorry, we're going right. to get Nick Player the invite real quick. Sorry, keep going. I was going to say... It would have been, I feel like, a really interesting seed if there had been, like, maybe... If we had been at 30 supers at that point, and, like, Torian had been at the front, and we would have been able to see maybe if Suit was LN play actually be viable. Um, I think that would have been pretty cool. Um, yeah, we, we talked yeah. about that a little bit on the comms, how, like, um, you don't know for sure, because even in a 3-2-1 distribution, you still don't control, like, exactly how many supers are going to be there. But in yeah. theory, had it been a 3-2-1 instead of a 2-1-1 and there been more supers than, and the map layout was slightly different, then that would have been like a play where that would have actually probably been the best option. You don't see that mm -hmm. super frequently in Chozo, so it was kind of neat that it yeah. came up. Mm -hmm. We're also now joined by Nick Player in chat. GG's Nick. Really well played on both of those uh, seats as well. Yeah, GG's. Man, GG. the second seat. <laughs> GG's, uh, GG's. Uh... Mm -hmm. This second seed was interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so just a, a couple of qu quick notes on that before I let you two um, give us some more insight as to how you were feeling and how you made some of the decisions that you did. First of all, when you're watching this back, both of you were in Croc at the exact same time in this hunt for Varia and literally, you know, at Croc at the same time, like less than a room apart for most of it. And then Zeb just was able to go ahead and pull away um to go ahead and get straight to like lower norfair i think that was one of the key points for this um the second is that there was actually some discussion in chat about um supers being in logic for this and uh mass went ahead and That's took a crazy. look into it yeah so mass took a a look into exactly what had happened and it wasn't a game breaking bug since you already had the non chozo super packs but that did turn out to be um, a small issue. Yeah. Um, and that mm -hmm. fix has already been implemented and is live right now. So all the seeds going forward uh, won't have that issue. Yeah, I was thinking about that while I was running. I was all like, was there really enough E-Tanks to put Wave into Logic? Because um, Wave is the only one you can get to. You can't get to speed um, for those super packs because there's a super door in the way. Um, yeah, Mass can elaborate more on to, yeah, basically, but that was like a, um, again, it's like a very small edge case that like, um, as he was watching, ended up seeing that and like basically patched it in real time. Listen, um, so, I gotta, again, I gotta, I gotta say something real now. quick, Nick, I think you did a great job running in both of these. Um, but man, I gotta, the, the main thing I gotta ask you on the, at the beginning of this interview is, why did you save the animals, man? <laughs> I, um, yeah, Zep was finished this race, and I, <laughs> I was, I was, um, I was thinking, okay, I, I saved the animals, because we killed, we killed the animals so many times, it's time once to save them. <laughs> no doubt, no, I'm just kidding around, but real quick, question for both of y'all, one thing I found pretty fascinating about both of these runs in conjunction was, um, early speed booster in both right so just as an in general both your perspectives on not only the two seeds with having speed so quickly but just kind of with these settings how do you uh the, does getting an early speed like that ever change how you approach anything um it makes me a little more aggressive i feel like because it's a way through about when hallway um like i think that that's like a it also really helps with the norfair um connecting the two sides of norfair kind of um Normally, without Speed Booster, I really like to keep them separated, if I can, um, the Business Center and the both mountain sides. But once you get Speed Booster, you can kind of just go through Frog Speedway and not worry about it. Um, 
Yeah, I, I just feel like it, in general, makes me play a little bit more aggressively to have that. Yeah, I was... Um, on these two seats, I checked... I checked uh, always everything, I think. Um, didn't... Didn't skip some um, Chozo locations, but on the first one I, I was um, I was skipping some stuff, but uh, didn't help me very well. And the second um, I was um, yeah I checked the Chozos uh, pretty pretty closely, and I didn't skip so many Chozos, and yeah. Um, when I got speed in first, I um, I always thinking um, it's gonna be a sweet in upper north here or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, in this he, uh, he uh, upper north here was absolutely nothing. I think there, there were two super, super packs things. on the uh, the bubble mountain side. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was an E tank at ice. I want to say. Yep, there was. That actually brings me to my next question. I think it was in race one. Two two kind of unique situations came up for both of you, but they were like opposite. Zeb, for you, you did, I think, a zero tank um, x-ray to begin with, but yeah. then also you had low energy going into ice. Both of those ended up being an e-tank that helped you kind of keep the item and, and get out. Mm -hmm. Nick, on the other hand, Zeb, you'll, it'll be funny for you to go back and watch race one. Nick had only one E tank until like the very, very end of, the, of that run. I mean, so we're Nick, you never had anything. When we're like, talking end talking. of run, we mean at 45 minutes, checking landing. Ha had killed all the boxes, only had one tank. Energy and getting a reserve to basically make it through Torian. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was so happy for the reserve tank. <laughs> <laughs> I I mm. don't I don't really like reserve tank, but in this kind of situations, I love this. Uh, I loved it's a reserve tank, and but anyway, in the first seat, Zep, you are crazy. Forty six minutes, he's mad. Yeah, that one was a really interesting seed. So I think that um, this is the second time in this tournament that I've had a seed where it's like super low e-tanks like that and you just need to basically find the e-tanks to be in go mode um i had one against nitro where we were both like right next to torian and we both had two e-tanks and we were just searching for, i think we were actually one and one -er, and we were just searching for another e-tank um to be able to beat the game but i'm not sure if that just comes up more often in the in this mode um or if it's just like coincidence I think that partly it is with this mode because I think that the starter charge means that you're in go mode a little bit faster than you otherwise would be. Um, you don't need to worry about your ammo like completely. Like you, you still want ammo, of course. Um, you don't want to be fighting Mother Brain with a 40 charge shot fight. Hey, speak for yourself, Zeb. Damage, yeah. But um, like you are technically in go mode a lot faster when you don't have to worry about that. Um. And then, like, you, with Chozo, you're only finding three tanks, one reserve, potentially, on the statues. So if you don't just don't run into, like, so you're kind of disincentivized from, like, checking as much ammo because you don't need it, need it. Um, which leads you to not finding as many E-tanks in the ammo locations. And then you're also not finding as many um, E-tanks on the statues. So I think that this mode kind of leads to those kind of situations, but which I think are unique and interesting. Um, I actually really like them. It also leads to like some really scary situations, um, like doing one tank war and warfare kind of stuff, um, a lot more often. I agree with you. I, I, you know, and I'm not just saying this because we put this tournament together. One of the things we'd like to do is is try different types of settings for different tournaments. But generally speaking, I think this has been neat. Like it's just. It, it has enough of the main stuff in it that most of our other tournaments have had, but there's enough of a wrinkle to where you get to make some different types of decisions. So, so far, I think it's played pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I actually really like this mode. I think that it's really cool. I think that the starter charge, the way it works, I, I really like it because I think it leads to actually boss fights um, that are very long and, like, interesting. Um, I think that with the other kind of starter charge modes, um, 
the charge beam has gotten too strong too quickly. But I think with this mode, I found that the you end up most of the time with like somewhere between like a 100, 200 charge shot um, damage beam, sometimes even less um, by the end of the game. And I think that, that leads to some really interesting um, boss fights, some pretty scary mother brain stuff at the end too, especially with the low E tank stuff. Yeah, I agree. Um, so just, you know, before we kind of get close to wrapping this up here in a minute, really exciting for both of you guys to make it to the semifinals, making the top four. Uh, very impressive. Y'all had a really good competitive match today, even though Zev won 2-0. Both races were uh, definitely competitive. So, uh, Nick, just any, you know, final uh, thoughts about the, the, the match in general or anything else? Uh yeah, thank you very much for this uh, Tony Kip uh, and everybody who um, who create this tourney. Uh, I really, I really enjoyed that. Um, I got to the semi-finals. It's very, very good um, because I really, uh, I don't really uh, play full area uh, settings. I play uh, most vanilla vanilla randomizer settings or vanilla categories. So I'm I'm very happy that I got to, to the semifinals and GG Zep, um, congratulations and yeah um, I hope you win this tourney. <laughs> yeah, Nick, thank you for participating, man. We really appreciate it. Zeb, uh, any response? Um, yeah, thanks. Um, GG to you as well. Yeah, I think that these settings are like really good. I, I've been really enjoying them. Um, this might be my favorite of the dash area modes I've tried so far, um, or the dash modes in general I've tried. I think that it's just like a really fun um, way to play this. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's all I really have to say. I'm looking forward to the finals. Yeah, congratulations. Really excited to see you run tomorrow, uh, either against Audra or Derp. Um, which will be a great matchup. So good luck tomorrow in the grand finals on Memorial Day. And um, yeah, really fun semifinals today. Kupo, anything else you'd like to add before we uh, wrap up? Uh, I guess also shout out to our boy Jestro for tracking again today. Really appreciate his help. But Kupo, anything else you want to add? Um, no, not really. Just really happy to see people playing this mode. Really happy to see, you know, this like weekend tournament. This has been a blast to go through. I think the races that both of you put on were really fun. It's going to be a great watch back as well. And really excited to see um, Zeb uh, take on either the, the winner of um, this next match that we're going to have in about 30 minutes between Audra and Derp. So we might get a, uh, a rematch, essentially, of uh, SG Live from October. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Um, also, it would be cool if, if Derp, like Derp and Audra played, I think, in SG Live online last year. I think Derp won that series 2-1. to one. So either way, no matter who wins here, we will have a, a, a fantastic finals, and uh, it'll be really cool to see. But, yeah, uh, guys, stick around. I think... What time does that start, Kupo? Do you know it's, off the top? It of your starts head? at um well, it starts at eleven forty p or eleven ten p.m. my time, which is in about uh, thirty minutes. Okay, awesome. Well, um, we'll we'll cut it there, and um, and we will see you guys for the uh, the other semifinals match here in a bit, and then tomorrow for the finals. Um, Nick, thank you for participating in the tournament. Uh, glad you uh, were in it. Appreciate your participation. And Zeb, good luck tomorrow. And everybody else, we will see you next mission.